is him. That's what I desire. To see him. To not only see him in this building, which isn't the church. To see him on the highways. To see him in the grocery store. To see him in the delivery room as babies are being born. To see him in the hospice rooms. To see him in the jails and the prisons. To see him on the streets with people with signs. To see him where families are getting broken apart, where families are being brought together. To see him where a drug addict gets free. To see him prompt someone to forgive. As I prepared the message for this evening, I was going through it one more time at about 1 a.m. last night and he told me that's not what I want you to talk about. And I said, really? It's 1 a.m. And I don't got my computer with me. So I came in here late last night with our puppy and we spent a little time in the sanctuary because all I wanted to do was see him. And if that really is my main focus in life, and he said to me to tell you why aren't you unwrapping him? What is a gift if the gift is never open? I think to myself um, as a father and a son and a husband and as a friend and as a brother, I love giving gifts. But as I said on Sunday, I don't wait for Christmas to give them. No different than Easter or Resurrection Sunday. I don't celebrate it once a year. I celebrate it daily. Because once my king was born, it causes a daily celebration. Once he was resurrected, it causes a daily celebration. But God just spoke, Jesus spoke to me last night that, that the ultimate gift is him. But as a giver, I had to evaluate, Lord, what are you really telling me? Yes, it's fun to go to the mall or order something on the internet, which I don't know how to do it. I just see your Amazon packages showing up. <laughs> my credit card going up. <laughs> but, but, but that's exciting to get a gift for a friend or a loved one of something that they wanted. That's exciting. It's another thing to wrap the gift and you get excited about how it is that they will respond and how privileged you were to be able to even afford the gift. But what's really exciting as a gift giver? To watch the recipient of the gift open the gift. That's why you give the gift. And then I asked Jesus last night at about 2 a.m., why is it, and I'm just speaking about me now, why is it that my mom took me to church, grew up in the church, fell away from the church, why is it that I never opened that gift that the father gave me with his son? The gift was sitting there the whole time for me to open it. And what is a gift if it's never opened? And this evening I'm going to talk to you real quickly about 11 different components of unwrapping Jesus in your life. And then I was worshiping, I thought, you know, I'm, I'm not a taker. If the Father sent his one and only Son why we're here tonight to celebrate the birth, then I want to give something back. So God convicted me, I'm going to talk to you about 11 different gifts within the gift. He convicted me to write an $1,100 check, $100 for every gift, which isn't even close to compare to what was given. I'm blessed, but I don't take my blessings for granted. So if anything rings true to you during this short message of a gift that you possibly haven't unwrapped within the gift, I'm challenging you to come up here and give a financial offering during this sermon. 
Lord, you are clearly here. Wow. Wow, the anointing of that worship. Wow. Lord, we're here to celebrate you, who you are, what you've done, what you are doing, and what you will do. Lord, you are the great I am, always doing, always loving, always protecting, always giving. Lord, have your way in this service tonight. In your name we pray, amen. amen. I think about the first gift, the ultimate gift. In John 3.16, where it says, so God so greatly loved. I mean, the ultimate gift of salvation. And dearly prized the world. He even gave his one and only begotten son. Have you, ever, have you ever heard somebody talk about a gift they got and they were talking about you or a relative or maybe it was you? They even gave me this. When you hear that word even, he gave me this and he even gave me that. When I really study this word, that word even stands out. Because he made it even with us. He cleared the slate with us, the gift of salvation, where so many people today haven't unwrapped that gift. And we as Christians need to do a better job of representing who Jesus really is so somebody would be challenged to unwrap the gift of salvation. The gift of salvation is so precious within the gift of Jesus. He says, whoever believes, and I think a lot of people believe, but they don't trust in him. And how can you really believe in something you don't trust in as Savior and shall not perish but have eternal life? I mean, that gift, that gift that you don't have to say goodbye to a loved one. You can say, see you later. That makes hospice a little easier. Amen. The Matthews family is here tonight, and I've never been so privileged in my entire life to sit with his wife in hospice. Because tonight I will honor her because she knew where she was going. And there was a peace in that room that I saw the gift of salvation. Another component of the gift of Jesus is the unwrapping love. So many of us do not know what love is and God is love and God is patient. He is kind. He does not envy. He does not boast. God does not keep a record of wrongs. Of course, God does not delight in evil, but he rejoices in the truth. The gift of love, so many of us have not unwrapped the gift of love. We don't lay down our lives for our friends. I mean, that is the greatest act of love. And without love, church, you have nothing. The gift of love, as we unwrap that, the, the third component of this gift is unwrapping your identity. You got to quit trying to figure out who you are and recognize whose you are. That you've been bought with a price, you are not your own. So many of us are trying to find ourselves in work or family or finances or a vehicle or a title. And when we lack identity, the, the unwrapping of identity. But as many of you did receive and welcome him, he gave you the right, the authority, the gift of authority and privilege to become children of God. I know who my father in heaven is. I unwrapped that gift many years ago. To those who believe and hear to trust in and rely on his name, the fourth thing, unwrapping his grace, his divine assistance. So many of us are not operating in his love and we're not able to be loved or give love. We, we, we really don't understand the salvation. We don't understand the grace and we believe in him, but we don't really trust him and we don't really unwrap the gift. And I'm sitting here tonight and I'm pleading with you. You want to see the look on Jesus' face when you open your present. He wants to see you open the present of love. He wants to see you open the present of grace. He wants to see you open the present of salvation. But it's, if it's never open, you'll never see his face when you open it. These gifts need to be unwrapped, church. And these gifts need to be shared. The, the, the unwrapping forgiveness. Some of you tonight cannot forgive people or you do not feel that you've been forgiven. And you need to unwrap forgiveness and you need to forgive yourself and allow him to forgive you and forgive others. And it says the redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. 
John 8, 36, unwrapping freedom. I'm free of my past. I'm free of my present. And I'm free of my future. I am free. I'm not going to follow a Christian that ain't free. I ain't following a Christian that's got a bad mood. I ain't following a Christian that ain't operating in grace or his love. I ain't following a Christian that doesn't understand salvation, that just comes to church to punch a time card, to look like they got it together. I'm following real Christians. I want to unwrap his love. I want to unwrap his grace. I want to unwrap his forgiveness. See, a lot of us don't know how to unwrap the gift. And we're walking around and we're not free. First Peter 2, unwrapping healing. He was wounded so you could get healed. But yet we haven't unwrapped it. We're still hurt. And because we hurt, we hurt people. And we don't unwrap his healing and we're wounded from what happened 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 5 minutes ago. And we don't unwrap. I appreciate you sewing in to the gift of healing that he's given you. If you are walking around wounded tonight, you haven't unwrapped the gift of healing. By his wounds, we are healed. John 14, unwrapping peace. A lot of us are chasing peace in the world with things. That's not what Jesus taught us. Jesus said, peace I leave with you. This peace that I leave with you is not like the world can give you. Do not be afraid. Trouble will come. I got trouble and fear surrounding me on a daily. So I unwrap his peace every day. And that peace is so precious to me, it transcends all understanding. Unwrapping the gift of peace. Colossians 11, unwrapping strength and power. You cannot be pitiful and powerful at the same time. If you got the same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead in you, you should not be pitiful. You should be powerful. You need to unlock and unwrap his power and his peace and his strength and his glory and his love and his salvation. You got to unwrap the whole gift. Don't just unwrap a portion of the gift. Church. Some of you are struggling. You don't have strength and you do not have power. You need to unwrap his power. Second Corinthians, unwrapping reconciliation. You can't reconcile until you forgive. And you're waiting for God to reconcile a relationship. You're waiting for the new to come and the old to go, but you don't unwrap this newness that God has given you. Even though you may weep in the evening, may joy come in the morning, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. Unwrap his joy tonight, church. Unwrap his joy. That endurance and patience, and, and Christ says to us that I have given you the ministry of reconciliation. You can be reconciled back to the Father through Jesus. And when you reconcile for yourself unto God, you can now be a vessel of reconciliation for those who are lost to be reconciled back to Jesus. And then they can unwrap the gift. But how can they unwrap the gift without you unwrapping the gift? You are the gift that they need to unwrap. You may be the only Jesus they ever hear. See, unwrap his mind. The Bible says you can have the mind of Christ. Unwrap his mind. Unwrap his heart. And lastly, unwrapping abundance. John 10.10 10 says this. So many of us, and this isn't talking about material things. I'm talking about abundant love, abundant peace. But if you have abundant love, peace, grace, strength, and power, and salvation, and all these different things, you're going to have abundant things. Jesus said, I came. Say, came. came. He showed up right now. He came that we may have a life. And we not actually just have a life. We can actually enjoy our lives. I don't want to follow a Christian that doesn't enjoy their life. Enjoy life to the full until it overflows. But here's the first part of John 10.10. 10, that the thief came to kill, steal, and destroy what your gift how many years has this gift sat unwrapped as you come to church and you don't unwrap the components of the gift and i'm leaving out hundreds of components of jesus but this gift tonight 
is going to get unwrapped. So as we close tonight, I want you to examine yourself. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? So here's this gift he gave me, his one and only son. And within that gift, there's so much more than just salvation, even though salvation is everything. There's power, there's grace, there's love, there's strength, there's his mind, there's his heart, there's his, his glory, there's all those things, but yet we don't unwrap it. And tonight, I want to I wanna put a smile on Jesus' face. I don't want this to be any other Christmas, like any other Christmas we've ever had. So when you unwrap this thing, he's watching to see what your response will be. And I look at even the paper where it says joy and peace and love and all these different things. But tonight I got to unwrap the gift because in the gift is him. And it isn't about the paper. It's about him. I want to unwrap him. I want to unwrap every component of him. And he is the greatest gift. He is the greatest giver. He is the greatest lover. He is the greatest everything. So tonight, as the lights come down and you pull your candles out, I want you to talk to him. And I want you to say to him, give me your love. Give me your grace. I unwrapped it tonight, Jesus. I unwrapped every part of you tonight. I want every part of you. I want to represent you. I want to walk with you. I want to do things on your behalf. I can't do it on my own. I need your strength to do it. But tonight, we will be still as you bestow the components of your gifts as we sing silently.